Helgen's Lion, a rare prototype. But does it roar? Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Proper Chuffed. My name's Hilton, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. That's half the fun of this, isn't it? If you are new here, welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy this content, and if you do, please consider subscribing. If you're one of the returning viewers, welcome back, guys. It's good to see you again. So, let's get into today's review. Um, this is a locomotive I'd had my eye on for a while, uh, on Hattons. And when they sort of closed down, I think during the last sort of week or so of being in business, they had like, I think it was almost 50% clearance, something to that effect. It was quite a significant price drop. And there were two locos that I had my eye on and I decided to pick both of them up. <laughs> um, <laughs> not a mistake at all. Totally a responsible financial decision. Um, <laughs> but both of them arrived a while ago and I've got them here and I'm gonna take a look at one of them today. Um, Actually, we'll play a little bit of a game. I'll put the other one on the layout somewhere and see if you can spot it. If you can, <laughs> let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll be reviewing that one very, very soon too. So, um, I think I basically got this loco, well, I added it to my cart um, before the actual like sale itself went live on like social media so that everyone was aware of it. I just happened to be browsing the site at the same time that I saw the price drop and I was absolutely stoked. There are a couple weird little diesels and sort of experimental type locomotives that I'm kind of like got my eye on and I'm looking to add to the collection. And this is certainly one of them. And obviously you know what it is. Uh, well, I know what it is. <laughs> uh, it's Helgen's Lion diesel locomotive. Um, quite a special locomotive. Uh, I think it was one of those very unique sort of prototype diesels that kind of was like a forebear for many locos that came after it. So um, without further ado, let's get straight into this today. Righto, Helgen's Lion. Here we go, a very boring box from Helgen. Nothing new, obviously this is their older design. I think the newer stuff has like blueprints on it, which is quite cool. I'm not gonna bother too much with the box. Um, so interestingly enough here, it says that this is a limited edition of 4,000 models. Does that make it limited edition? Um, I don't think so. Anyways, let's get into this Helgen line. A fairly run-of-the-mill box here, um, but I do appreciate the fact that even in 2011, Helgen were doing this kind of like compact and very secure type packaging. And there she is. No messing about. Right. First thing I noticed, there's a decent amount of weight to this. Um, box is in yeah pretty good nick overall I will say that um, okay so we got two documents here the first is a sort of spare part drawing of the locomotive and then we have the sort of user's manual with all the usual details DCC fitting guide fortunately for you I've already done that but if you would like to see me install DCC and locomotives in future please do let me know in the comments Jeepers. Okay, so <laughs> this is a really attractive locomotive. It's like a, it's like the stormtrooper of diesels. Honestly, we don't need to see his identity. <laughs> it's really, really pretty. Um, the color is just so striking. What an odd choice for a diesel on British railways to make a white locomotive. I mean, surely they knew it was going to get absolutely filthy within minutes of firing up <laughs> um, but yeah there's a lot of detail here and you know obviously go into it in a little bit more close-up detail but already what strikes me is the the nameplate lion here in the sort of etched silver it's not it's not like pronounced or anything but you know it, it's definitely a raised part that was separately colored and and printed on there a um, couple electricity warnings the numbering is printed quite well. Um, I suppose that's prototypical. Uh, it sort of seems to have a gray interior lettering and then oh, a black stroke around it, which looks quite nice. I mean, the bogies were white. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they made the bogies white? <laughs> Everything was white on this locomotive. And I think that's just what's so cool about it. It's, it's, it's a very, very strikingly white locomotive. But yeah, overall, a, a decent weight to it. I don't feel like that comes from the body at all. I feel like that comes from 
the weight inside of the chassis. On the top, we've got two roof fans. Um, although they are not like actual fans, they're just printed on. They do look fairly good from certain angles. Um, it almost looks like they've got depth to them, which, you know, kudos to Helgen. They've obviously darkened that orange on the inside and given it like almost like a depth feel to it. So that's pretty cool. But um, as per usual, I think what we'll do is we'll take a closer look and a bit of history on Helgen's lion, or no, not, not Helgen's lion, the real lion. <laughs> and then we'll take a look at the Helgen. <laughs> Built in 1962 at BRCW's Smethwick Works near Birmingham, the prototype for mainline diesel electric locomotive D0260 was christened Lion. This unique locomotive was constructed through the collaboration of Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company, Salsa, the engine manufacturer, and Associated Electrical Industries. Lion was conceived as a private initiative to fulfill British Railway's need for a potent cocoa wheel arrangement locomotive serving as a replacement for earlier models like the Peak classes. The British Transport Commission unveiled the specifications for this endeavour on January 15, 1960. Notably, train heating was to be accomplished through both steam and electrical train heating systems. In contrast to the prior pilot scheme, the BTC anticipated that the prototypes, including Lion, would be funded by the manufacturers, deviating from the traditional practice of placing bulk orders without prior scrutiny. The Type 4 project led to the creation of three prototypes, Falcon, DB2 and Lion, with the latter two evolving into the Class 50 and 47 respectively. Lion, equipped with a twin bank Salta 12LDA 28C engine generating 2750 horsepower, employed a more robust iteration of the same engine as the Class 44 Peaks, but featured a lighter overall construction and a more reliable bogey design. Initial testing by British Railways took place on Western Region services departing from London Paddington, based at Wolverhampton Stafford Road Shed where Lion had its den. Subsequently, Lion relocated to Finsbury Park on the Eastern Region, servicing London King's Cross. However, British Rail opted to procure its new Type 4 fleet from Brush Traction, specifically the Class 47. Subsequently, D0260 was withdrawn in February 1964. Details surrounding Lion's final withdrawal remain largely undisclosed, with even the BRC and W workforce kept uninformed about its fate. Post-withdrawal, Lion was transferred to AEI's works at Atticliffe, where AEI assumed responsibility for dismantling the locomotive, primarily to recover their electrical components. In the process, Salta reclaimed the 12LDA 28C power unit and radiators. The remaining components, primarily the body shell and bogies, were eventually scrapped at the Atticliffe yard. The exact date of the final dismantling remains uncertain, with one report suggesting it occurred as late as 1965. So here's Lion then, in a very striking white livery, and I, I had to say, <laughs> I kind of struggled to get the, the balancing right on, on, on the white, um, just so that it wasn't overexposed, and you can see all the details still. But as you can see, it really is quite a bold, uh, statement <laughs> that is being made by this locomotive again I just I don't quite understand what the logic was behind it I understand that it was a prototype I'm not complaining I think it was really cool I can just imagine the, a cleaning nightmare to keep this locomotive looking in top shape but um, the model translates I think fairly well from the historical photos that I've seen I think you've got a really really good looking model here my first and biggest complaints and I'm probably going to mention it a few times is the bogies Unfortunately, the bogies are just a little bit too plastic looking. And while they are obviously plastic bogies, there's something just a little bit off about them. They kind of have a very like poor, um, I don't know, color that, that has been sort of pushed out here. I can see that the, the plastic cast on these bogies has not been painted additionally. This is the color that the plastic was poured in. And unfortunately, I think it could just do with an extra bit of glossy paint work over that to really complete that look and make it look a lot more realistic and heavy. Right now, it just looks quite light and plastic, which is exactly what it is, unfortunately. At the front, the previous owner of this line has obviously put the detail pack on board and it looks absolutely fantastic with the buffer beam looking very detailed with the screw link couplings and, and vacuum pipes. 
Um, the buffers are sprung, fortunately, but they are not metal by any means. In fact, pretty much everything on this locomotive is plastic in some way. There's very little metal other than inside the actual frame. Rather impressed with the small handrail detail that's been included at the front of the cab there as well as the cab head code that's been included. I think there were a number of other head codes included with it when you first purchased it. However, it does seem those have disappeared somewhere and have been lost in translation. So I'm stuck with IB21, which if anyone knows what that is, you let me know. Limited light functionality here. As you can see, we do have the front headlamps that do sort of light up. We'll test those out a little bit later. I'm not sure if the, the original prototype did actually have white windscreen wipers initially, but that just seems to me that that's part of the molding and it looks kind of cheap. So you could certainly do with a bit of detailing there. The cab glass itself, nothing like the newer sort of reflective ones that we see. Um, it's very basic and the cab interior itself is very rudimentary. However, there does seem to be a seat fitted as well as a couple of driving controls included too. I guess the real star of the show, even though it's fairly easy to miss, is actually the nameplate itself. With absolutely exceptional printing, letter for letter, everything is there and it, it seems very well done. And it's got a very nice glossy finish to it, so it gives it a real metal sheen. I'm really, really happy with that. As well as the banding across the, the length of the locomotive, these sort of gold stripes that have been included. Um, they are fairly well done. They do sort of jump out every now and there. but. To be honest with you, at layout distance, you wouldn't even notice it. It looks very clean and neat, and I think they've done a very good job with the livery overall. And we're back to the bogies. Unfortunately, this is really, I think, the weakest point of this entire locomotive. While very impressive overall, I think that this is probably the one area where Helgen could have put a little bit more effort into. And if they do do another version of line, I sure hope that either the bogies themselves will be cast metal doubtful but um, otherwise if they could just finish it up nicely i think it would really bring it all together you've got a really nicely detailed little bogey here not particularly crazy or anything like that but it's certainly there the details there and it could really pop with an extra glossy coat of white if that is the color that it was finished in Looking at the top, and I think what really stands out with Lion and why I say so many times, it kind of looks like a Stormtrooper, is that it's got these very sort of stark contrasting colors. Obviously, you've got the white of the livery with these very black vents that just pop out and really make it sort of scream. And there are so many different vents all the way along the body from just directly beneath the fans all the way to the long sides of the locomotive. It's just got vents everywhere. Um, quite a crazy looking little design, but very, very pretty and eye catching too. The fans, while not recessed, are painted on, but they actually do look really good, I will say. I think that they've done a really good job of creating the illusion of depth there. And I can't really complain about it, to be honest with you. I think if there were to be a newer tooling, that would certainly be an area of improvement, which people would like. It seems that we're all enjoying rotating fans these days, so if you want to include those on the next one, Helgen, be my guest. The other thing that stands out to me, unfortunately, is the central sort of opening where you can see through this sort of glazed glass that looks at the decoder and chipboard below it. The diesel tank included on the locomotive is fairly well done. Um, it could do with also a bit of weathering and a bit more sort of metal looking finish to it as some modern locomotives do. I can't really criticize this too much. It's a 2011 locomotive. Things were a little bit different back then. The tooling was a little bit different, but overall there are a lot of like recessed little details here and there that I kind of pick up more and more as I look, but at face value, it's, it's a fairly basic locomotive. There's not a hell of a lot going on here. And as you can see through the windows on the sides, you can see the chip boards for the DCC and running systems of the actual model itself, which is unfortunate. You need to cover those up, I think. So how does it run, you ask? Well, obviously this is a second-hand locomotive, so it's been run in already. But straight out of the box, I'm very impressed with it. It's got a fairly decent crawl, not perhaps as fine as some of the newer locomotives you may have experienced, but it's a decent crawl. Um, you can press, I think it's function four, and it kind of settles into a very like slow light mode or shunting mode. 
and it, it really putters along then, which is quite nice. You can get it up to some pretty insane speeds too, which is, you know, I suppose true to the prototype. It was quite a quick engine on the, on the lines when it was running. As you can see, it handles points incredibly well. It's very smooth. The bogeys seem to be very, very sturdy and it doesn't have any issues whatsoever with my crossover, which is always my sort of first test of a locomotive. It runs beautifully across these backwards and forwards and at different speeds, which is always good to see. Now that my distillery line is on its way up, we can actually test out some inclines and declines at different sort of heights. Now it seems that on a sort of 2% climb, it is climbing very smoothly, no issues whatsoever. However, once we get to the steeper part of the incline, Lion does sort of come off the rails a little bit. And that is because the middle wheel of the both bogies is fixed in place. There's no give, so it can't play up and down at all. And unfortunately, when it hits a rather steep point, it does tend to jump the middle wheels of the bogies right off the track. So it's not quite suited to this. And I obviously totally understand that my incline is rather steep at this point and bear in mind it's sort of designed for smaller lighter locomotives but it's always a good test for me to put a locomotive up this hill and see how they perform unfortunately Lion isn't really making it here rather impressively there is a good degree of rotation in the bogey as you can see that Lion handles both third and second radius curves with absolute ease Overall, Lion performs admirably and sort of is right up there with modern model railway locomotive standards for diesels of this type. She's quite strong. She's got great haulage capacity. I've basically put on my entire rake of coaches that I have available, which is at this point 12, and she pulls absolutely beautifully with these. No issues whatsoever. I'm very impressed with it overall. A fantastic locomotive. So let's get into some running. I think for 117 pounds, this is a fantastic price for a locomotive of this age and this quality. Obviously, you know, <laughs> I think if you look on eBay now, you're probably looking at like 180, 200 pounds. I think given its sort of rarity factor, I kind of lucked out with this, uh, given that I got it on sort of like a massive discount. Um, but I, I, I probably wouldn't be, you know, if I had known, I, I wouldn't have spent more than maybe 150 pounds on something like this. You know, I think new, well, secondhand on eBay, they go for about 200 pounds now. Um, and if I was, you know, shopping for one at that price, I'd probably look over it at this point. I just don't think that like, it's got everything that you would expect from a modern locomotive or a locomotive of that price. 200 pounds, a lot to pay for. 
So I suppose that speaks more to a sort of collector's market more than anything. Obviously, collector's items kind of go for weird prices at times. <laughs> I mean, they're almost ludicrous. But if you are sort of modeling a certain area or this is something that like you would need on your layout, you'd probably be happy to spend the extra, I guess, what would be like 50 or 70 pounds to get something like this on the layout. Overall, it's, it's a really good looking locomotive. But once you sort of taking a look at the closer details of it, you can see that it's an older model and it certainly doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you would expect from a modern locomotive at that price point. I mean, even just looking at like Helgen's newer stuff, like the NBL 10800, that is a fantastically detailed and really intricate locomotive. And I think that's about 170 odd pounds now, give or take, if you get it on sale. So, you know, looking at that and as a direct sort of comparison of that weird prototype diesel sort of market, I wouldn't spend 200 pounds on this. <laughs> I'd probably wait for an update given that they have the tooling for it. Um, I think you're probably best out waiting for, you know, a newer version of this with a little bit more in it and to show off. Probably a sound version. I expect that would be possible and doable. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't be spending 200 pounds on this one. As part of an ongoing effort to continue to drive growth in this community, I'd like to point out another YouTuber this week. But before I do, I just wanna say thanks again to Martin from Donington Castle Model Railway. He actually gave me a shout out in one of his most recent videos and it was really, really touching. I was actually quite like taken aback by just how much detail he went into about my channel and hearing it from somebody else on a video, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that, that was really cool. So thanks very much, Martin. So this week, I want to point out a friend of mine that I've made recently, um, both through YouTube and through Instagram. By the way, I'm on Instagram. I don't have a lot of followers or anything like that, but if you do want to chat to me there, I'd, I'd love that. That's always fantastic. Anyways, I get back to the, <laughs> let me get back to the YouTube. Sorry, I do this all the time. Um, is Engage USA. So <laughs> Engage USA um, is, is run by a guy called Dan. Dan is a absolutely lovely guy. He's around my age, which makes it great to sort of relate to him. And he's also sort of like divorced from the UK market in the fact that, you know, he lives in the USA and he's kind of doing Engage and British Engage. And I think his kind of focuses on GWR stuff. Um, we've had some fantastic chats on Instagram lately and been sharing a lot about, you know, our hobby and our lives. And, and it's just fantastic to like make a friend um, in the hobby in that regard. So Dan's also on his YouTube journey and if you are an Engage modeler, which you very well may be, I am actually considering it now, but not just yet. <laughs> um, please do go check out Dan, Engage USA. I'll drop a link to him below in the, in the comments and I'll also just pop one up in the banner there. Please do go check him out. He could use all the support. He's really putting a lot of effort into his videos and I think he does really constructive good feedback and reviews on locomotives so if you are an engage modeler modeler and have any interest in that please do go check out engage usa and and give dan some support that would be really great um one of the things we were just talking about is like how sort of welcomed we felt by the british community um it's been really nice of you guys to just you know kind of take us into the fold and give us advice and and that's been really really like heartwarming it's kind of daunting when you're when you're in another country and you're you're modeling something that other people are so very familiar with but you're kind of like an outsider to it i mean i've only been to the uk twice and you know barely then have i like sort of taken in what you guys see almost every day so um yeah it's a bit of a tangent anyways but uh please do go check him out if you've made it this far in the video, um, congratulations. Do you want a hug or a, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> a badge? <laughs> How about a badge? Um, thumbs up, well done. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> no one makes it this far ever. This is crazy. We should like, I don't know, have a, like a chat or something. A cup of tea, let's do that. Thanks guys, I really appreciate the fact that you're here at the end of the video. <laughs> it's like, it's weird, but um, but I, I do appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Until I see you next time, keep your engines fired and stay on track, all the best. It's straight into Helgen's Lion. Arr.